Okay. What's up everybody? Just got out of the subway at uh, St. George. It's gonna start my Uber shift. Uh, I like to usually start down in like the core of the city, but I actually need to visit a bike shop. I just realized that uh, my rear wheel hub is like just a little bit finicky. There's, there's, a, there's a bit of wiggle room there. I noticed that a couple days ago, but I still rode on it. Um, didn't really affect me much uh, in my ride, but I definitely notice a lot more room now. Anyways, let's see if there's a bike shop that's open around now. It's like almost six o'clock, so I'm kind of doubting it but we'll see what's down there it's open down there um, anyways just uh, around this time last year was when I first started to, to get into veganism and learn more about it um, I had always been like an eco-conscious person, you know, I, I've always wanted an electric car, I love Teslas, you know, I've always been like, you know, if I'm going to get a car, it's going to be a fucking electric, um, because I don't want to be polluting the earth. Um, but when I was getting into veganism, I realized how wasteful, um, okay, now I'm really feeling the wiggle in the wheel, it's really off-putting. Um, you know, switch hands here. You know, I started to realize like how resource intensive uh, animal products are. And I didn't even realize that like in order for like one pound of, of beef, it's like 16 pounds of, gr of grain has to go into it and however many liters of water for cattle. The animal agriculture is just such a big polluter and such a big resource waster that it, it just made sense for me to just drop it <laughs> and and try to make the switch. So I did. Um, it was pretty tough at first. Like I, where I've come from, like cooking wise, is like chicken fingers and fries. So <laughs> it's really been. A huge learning experience like cooking new things trying new recipes and whatnot um, but it's been really gratifying like cooking your own meals that just taste amazing and you started it from scratch you know you just added the spices you like you added the vegetables you like and it turned out amazing like I've been loving making stir fries and rice uh, and different pastas um, those are normally my staples um, but yeah just learning how to cook on my own has really like given me a huge uh, boost in confidence. Um, I don't have to rely on eating fast food or eating out and eating all this processed junk food when I don't have to because um, I just make it at home and it's cheaper, it's much healthier as well. Um, yeah, that's one thing that's really changed in my life. Like before going vegan, I was feeling like shit. I was feeling like 
real shit. Uh, and I was working two jobs at the time, and this guy, holy shit. Anyways, um, <laughs> two, working two jobs at the time, I was having coffee every morning just to feel like, you know, I could get through the day, and it sucked, <laughs> you know? Um, now, I don't even need coffee at all. I just wake up, have some fruit, and I'm good to go. Um, but I think like a lot of it was, was all the eating out I was doing. Um, but I thought, you know, I was living lavish, eating like a king. You know, I should feel good, right? Um, but uh, yeah, another part of like what I was learning going into veganism was the animal cruelty. Now, I used to always promote like all the PETA content when I was back in like elementary school. I remember like seeing all the slaughterhouse footage of like chickens being slammed on the ground, pigs being slammed on the ground, just the brutality of it. And I think what a lot of people think when they see those videos is that it's only like those few investigated slaughterhouses that were doing these things. But what you don't realize is that it's common practice and animals are being treated cruelly everywhere. So, yeah, I feel a lot better now. Uh, I've finally gotten the hang of like how to eat and you know, how to stay healthy. Finally got back my blood work and I'm perfectly healthy. Uh, my doctor sent me back an email saying all the test results were adequate. Um, so yeah, I'm ready to start showing you guys the vegan way and I hope you are all open to it. Um, now, I don't expect anybody to just make the switch overnight, you know? Um, you should take time to, to change, and that's the only way you're gonna do it properly. If you just try to quit cold turkey, you're probably gonna do it wrong and feel like shit and then blame the vegan diet for it. So take a, like, take a slow transition reduce your consumption, that's the best thing you can do, and do more research. And I'm gonna be showing you guys lots of research and showing you guys lots of recipes soon. And here's a bike shop. They're actually pretty, pretty open here, a lot of people. Bikes on wheels. In Kensington Market right now. Beautiful, beautiful date square. I'll show it to you guys in a minute from Bunners. And I was watching over my the, the footage from just biking here. Please pardon my sniffles. Uh, I'm actually getting over like I wouldn't call it even a cold. I've just been like congested for the past week. Um, yeah, going vegan, you're not immune to all sickness. <laughs> you're definitely at a lower risk. Uh, and the lower occurrence of sickness um, but it all stemmed from uh, doing a workshop uh, like two weekends ago and we were doing some chanting and some like motivational stuff in the park with our shirts off uh, and you know as, as you might think uh, being with your shirt off in the cold probably is not the best idea um, I also had a lot of junk food that day as well so yeah not really surprised but I'm about to chow down on the state square I have to I have to get something when I come down here it's amazing um, yeah but I just wanted to share that in case people are gonna point out the fact that I'm sniffing all over the place I'm getting over it it hasn't been that bad I've just it's just been a lot of mucus coming out <laughs> Mm. 
Mm. Look at this. Look at all that. Look how much date filling there is there. Oh, it's so amazing. Please don't mind my greasy fingers. Oh, it's just crumbly. Mm. Highly recommend Bunners. 100%. Highly recommend. going to be a pretty easy fix. Uh, I have a loose bearing. Um, I didn't want to end the video there, but since I have 30 minutes to kill, I might as well talk a little bit more. Uh, I did want to come to the park here in Kensington, but it's under renovations, of course. Um, yeah, uh, what else about veganism during my, my first few stages? I actually didn't get too much into the serious like health aspects of veganism till like maybe halfway through and I started uh, watching videos of uh, Dr. Michael Greger and John McDougall. Uh, those are my first two main people that I that I started watching. Um, but they were really Jesus Christ, hey, buddy. Jack, come here. <laughs> come here, baby. Come here. It's okay. She's a rescue. Uh, <laughs> Oh, she's so cute. Hi, buddy. Good girl. Yeah. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> no problem. Anyways, um, yeah. So I didn't really get too much into the health aspect until like maybe halfway through, but it was mostly about the cruelty and the environmental. Like I just, like I. I had a moment where I was like really laying with my my stepmother's cat that I lived with um, and just how can you love this one animal so much and how we we really control their entire lives and we breed and produce all of these animals like over 150 billion land animals a year that number is so infathomable, <laughs> infathomable, <laughs> unfathomable. <laughs> um, just it's it's beyond our comprehension how many animals that is. You know, it's it's a ridiculous amount of animals we produce and use, and it's just how can you love your pets? So much and yet totally disregard a whole other species they feel the exact same things a pig a pig is as smart as a three-year-old child a three-year-old child <laughs> smarter than your dog and yet we kill them like they're nothing we enslave them like they're nothing you know I'm not saying that we should put animal lives above our own, but we should at least give them the same respect we do our pets. Like, there's no difference between them other than it's more common to have a dog in the house than a pig in the house. I think if people had more pigs as pets, we wouldn't be eating as much bacon as we did. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not too much on the ethics side of veganism. I just know it's wrong. <laughs> uh, it's kind of hard for me to debate it. Um, but it just seems so wrong, you know? Um, to, enslave, to enslave and slaughter billions of all these other species, but, you know, love our dogs, cats, whatever, everything else. Um, yeah. Um, more important to me is the health. I'm trying to get my grandmother and my mother and 
everybody that I know to become vegan because I don't want to see people succumb to the same debilitating diseases that our populations are so inflected with, the diabetes, uh, heart disease. You know, they're, they're projecting that diabetes is going to affect like one in three people uh, in the, the next coming three uh, in the next coming years. It's 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 a comp- <laughs> it's a disease that can be treated entirely through diet. Uh, doctors like John McDougall, uh, Dr. Cardwell, Esselstein, they have shown that you can reverse diabetes, you, you can reverse heart disease on a plant-based whole foods diet. And um, plant, plant-based whole foods is a, a term that you should really understand more than just vegan um, because it focuses on what you should really be eating, which is whole foods. Um, so not processed foods that are, uh, marketed as vegan. So like a lot of the Gardein products, um, although very tasty and very meat-like, um, they're processed soy products that are probably GMO and still contain quite a bit of saturated fat, um, and salt. So they're not particularly the healthiest foods. They're definitely good for you when you're transitioning. They're better than animal products because there's no cholesterol, and cholesterol is another thing that people don't seem to understand as a risk factor. It's, it's the main risk factor in heart disease, and once you take it out of your diet, you're going to be much healthier for it. Um, you're not progressing atherosclerosis, which leads to all types of heart disease. It's the buildup of cholesterol plaques in your arteries. Um, yeah, it's... You don't need cholesterol. Your body makes enough cholesterol as is. Uh, you don't need it to be healthy. You don't need to have dietary cholesterol in your diet. Um, yeah. Anyways, there's a lot of things to talk about with health. And that's the thing that really excites me. Um, I've thought about countless times going into nutrition or something, like a course in nutrition, just to give, me, give myself some more credibility. But honestly, all the research is already out there and it's already been done. Like, we don't need any more researchers. Like, I, that's not true. There's always more research to be done, but enough to convince you that a plant-based diet is healthier. It is healthier. <laughs> and that it's something you should really be interested in and really be concerning yourself with is already out there, okay? And there's more research coming day after day after day. Just follow Nutrition Facts. He, re- he has a team of researchers that look up all the most recent uh, studies out there, and it's very interesting to watch. Um, but yeah, I'll have more to say about all the aspects of veganism, environmental, morals, health in future videos but i hope you guys took something from this at least are a little bit more interested in veganism or plant-based whole foods eating um yeah if you have any questions feel free to comment them message me whatever and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching bye